<laughs> now, who doesn't love a kickabout in the park? I know I do. Me too. But football can also be a game of danger. You could be in danger of pulling a hamstring. Straining a side. Or even tearing a ligament. Oh, ooh. Which is why we always warm up first. Do some gentle leg stretches. Loosen that body up. And make sure those muscles are warmed up a bit. There we go, I'm thoroughly warmed up and guaranteed to be injury free. In fact, I'm not just warmed up, I'm boiling. <sighs> Don't need this anymore. Oh, my eye! Oh no, a minor injury. So what should you do if you accidentally get a whack on your eye? Should you A, shut your other eye and hope that everything's all right when you open them both? B, make an eye patch and pretend you're a pirate? C, put something cold on the eye for no more than 10 minutes to relieve the pain? Well, the answer is C. Put something cold on the eye until the pain is gone, but for no longer than 10 minutes. But if you've got problems with your vision, go to Accident and Emergency. How's that, Zahn? That's much better. I think I'm ready. But hold on. Arr! I'm going to play in the park with my ball until my timbers are shivered. Arr! What are you doing, Zahn? Just thought I'd try option B. So, if you get a whack on your eye, put something cold on it for no longer than 10 minutes. If you have problems with your vision, get an adult to take you to accident and emergency. Ouch. And now to our lab. Are you ready for some incredible experiments? I've never seen this happen before. We're getting gross. Ah! Ah! We're going big. Whoa! And dangerous. Yeah. Remember, we can only do these experiments because we're doctors. Don't try this at home. Today, we're looking at your bones. Oh, how many times do I have to tell Zard not to put giant snails on my clipboard? In fact, there are giant snails all over the lab. Zard, this is meant to be a snail-free lab. I'm preparing for our bone experiment. And to do it, I thought I'd talk to creatures with different kinds of skeleton. Stacy here has got her skeleton on the outside of her body called an exoskeleton. Right, and what have you actually learned from talking to the snail? Stacy's exoskeleton is a little bit like our bony skeletons. It needs to be light enough that she can move, but to support and protect her body, it also needs to be strong. Well, that's just like human bones, and I have one here. This bone is over a hundred years old. It's an adult human thigh bone, or femur. Like Stacy's shell, it's light. But what is amazing about your femur is that this lightweight piece of body kit is one of the strongest bones in your body. A femur can withstand huge weights pushing down on it. Let's take a closer look to see how that's possible. Now, your bone gets its strength from its clever design. This outer part of the bone is hard like rock. It's called cortical bone. But if this thigh bone was solid cortical bone, it would be way too heavy. So let's have a look inside. Because this bone isn't living, there's no bone marrow. So you can see something else. At both ends of this bone, there is a fine lattice of thin strands of bone. And this is called trabecular bone. It's very light because of all the space in there. This is a similar kind of structure to the honeycomb in a bee's hive. The honeycomb structure in your bones is what gives them the strength to withstand weight pushing down on them. And I can show this to you, Chris, with some toilet roll. Yeah, really? Here they are, all arranged in a honeycomb structure. Chris, on you get. All right, on your head be it. What do you think will happen when Chris stands on them? Wow, look at that! Zahn's toilet roll collection is supporting my entire body weight. Honeycomb is such a strong structure that your bones can carry a huge amount of weight. In fact, gram for gram, bone is stronger than steel. Stronger than steel? Well, that sounds like a challenge. All right, well, can you give me a hand down and we can do it? Come on. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Pumps and daisy. We want to know how much weight a femur can actually hold. We need to put it to the test. 
I've built a steel platform that is being propped up by four cow femurs or thigh bones. These bones, which are like yours, have the weight of the platform pushing down on them, a very heavy 300 kilograms. And the bones are happily holding it. So I think we need some heavier things to really put them to the test. Zond? Don't worry, Chris. I've got this. Simon, forwards. There you go, Chris. How's that for heavy? Well, Zahn, I must say this is excellent. You've got a sofa, a coffee table, a television, some shelves, basically the contents of someone's entire lounge. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is the contents of my lounge. Now, the four cow's femurs are supporting the weight of this very heavy steel platform. The sofa, the coffee table, television, and the bookshelf. That is a total weight of 508 kilos pushing down on the bones, and they are still happily holding it all up. Impressive. So we're going to need something even heavier. Let's add a fridge, freezer, and a washing machine. Is that my washing machine? I'm not sure if it's your washing machine, Chris, but it's got your unicorn onesie in it. In she goes. So the question is, can our femurs support the total weight of 715 kilos? And the answer is, they can. I must say, I think we're going to have to find something a bit heavier. Enough. You're not having anything more from my house. I'm taking all of this back right now. Oh. Time to get all this stuff home. Right. Take it away. What's going on? What's happening to my stuff? We're going to find out if those femurs can handle the combined weight of the sofa, the coffee table, the television, the fridge freezer, the bookshelf, the washing machine, the steel platform, and the removal van. And Mr. Grumbles. That's a combined weight of 2,274 kilos. That is amazing, and it's all thanks to the super strong, super light structure of your bones.